Welcome. Um, so you're here to learn how to write a statement of purpose. So you are either a student who's thinking of doing a undergrad or grad abroad, you're a parent, or you're, you are an IEC or some type of college counselor, and you want to be able to help your clientele um, when they are completing an application for an abroad university. So welcome. Um, so I'll just do a very quick intro for me. I'm the president of Affordable Degrees Abroad, and I have about 20 plus years of experience in higher ed. And I've, on my watch, sent 4,000 US students abroad to about 150 universities. So I've got a pretty wide range of how things work. Um, in addition, I spent six years of my life living in Turkey, Morocco, Japan, and France. And so all of this intercultural learning is really near and dear to my heart and really hope to be able to pass this knowledge on to others so they can have these transformational experiences. And honestly, like the reason I'm in this whole business is I have noticed an increased price tag of university in the United States. And my mission is really to help US students to be a guide to sort through all of the choices and to make sure that they can succeed abroad. So this is an example of what, how I'm gonna help you today. Here's what we're up to in the next hour. We're gonna talk about what the heck even is a statement of purpose, how this differs from US undergrad college essay applications, and we're gonna talk about what to include and what not to include, and then we're gonna to transition to making it happen. Many of you are downloading or have downloaded the worksheet. Um, I have a model called a power model, which will walk you through step-by-step step how to write a real kick-ass um, statement of purpose, and then to start your draft. And um, Reese, who is my marketing manager, is also applying to universities abroad, and she has graciously offered to um, sort of reveal her own process and own draft. So we're gonna live workshop something as well. So let's get started. Oh, I should say, all right. So this sort of statement of purpose presupposes that you even know which programs you are applying for. So let's say you're like, all right, I know I wanna get my degree abroad, I'm thinking about it. I just don't know how to do it or how to begin. So I want you to know, I do have a Passport to Your Grad Program Abroad course. It's an online course you can do at your own time. It's eight weeks long. And um, I'm also offering a sale right now. So it's $99 to, to take this course. So it's a way for you to progress and figure out how to even get to those um, particular programs. But assuming you know what you want, here are the next steps. So first off, I really want to ground us in what a statement of purpose is and how this differs from a U.S. college essay. You do not want to, to use old tricks in regards to a U.S. college essay. Um, and so I want you to almost treat this like you would a cover letter for a job. Now, I used to be a hiring manager at the University of Denver. I would get hundreds of applications when I opened up a particular job. Now, how did I weed those through? Basically what I did is I looked at, did the candidate understand the job? And then did he or she demonstrate why he or she would be a great fit? And so when those two things happened, that's when I moved people along. It is the same exact process. So when you learn this process, not only are you going to write an awesome statement of purpose, you can use this for um, cover letters for future jobs that you're applying for too. So the, the first thing is treat it like you would a cover letter for a job and don't spend time talking about how unique you are. Don't delve di deeply into your personal backstory. That's not what this is about right now. Instead, we're going to be clear about why you're a good fit for the program, and you're going to align, um, and we'll get to all the processes of how this works, but basically align how you 
your experiences connect with the academic content. So you're not going to talk about some something that happened to you in second grade and why that made you the person you are today, right? You're, you're connecting those dots. So the key is to research the program a lot. You need to know the coursework. You need to know who the faculty are, what are their interests, and really start to think about what excites you about this program. Now, some people will ask me, ah, should I talk about like, I really, I've been, I visited Paris before, Dublin before, should I talk about that? And it really doesn't add anything. Um, the only time I would see that being relevant would be maybe you have, uh, you're a heritage student. So putting one sentence in there can be helpful, but don't do it at the expense of talking about the academic content. All right, so now this is the model um, that we've been working on. So we call it the power model and we'll walk through all of the different steps. P is for prepare, and then you've got organize. The P and O, this is where you're gonna spend most of your time. And if you do this well, these next steps, write and edit should go relatively fast. A review, you'll also need to delve a little bit more deeply in there too. All right, so let's get started. All right, so prepare. Step one, this seems obvious, but make sure you are very clear in the admissions criteria and that you qualify for the program based on what they tell you. So assuming that's a check mark, move on to ne the next step, which is to research the crap out of this program. So here's what I want you to do. You go onto not the program website, you look at all of the courses, you highlight the ones that are like, oh, these are intriguing. If the syllabi are available, you go in and you actually dig into what the syllabi say. And then you also look at other things. Are there internships or practical experiences? And then look at the faculty bios. What are their research interests? Are there anything, is there anything that aligns with your research interests? or your professional interests. So make a mental note of everything that aligns and we'll show you what this next step looks like. Um, also be sure to carefully read over the essay prompt, um, including the word count. So most of the time you're gonna hit it, this is the format, they give you very vague instructions like write a statement of purpose and here's your word count. But just in case they give you a slight tweak to the question, just make sure you're hitting everything in there, including the word count. Okay, so that's the prepare. So this next step is super important. And this is, and it's sort of fun. So I'm just gonna give you an example. So this is based on a program that I um, know that's in Ireland. And so this particular program offers hands-on learning and team projects, which is awesome because if I were applying to this program, I love hands-on and team projects. And I know the importance of being on a team, right? So those are things that I find a positive and I'm excited about. All right, so that's an example. The next one is this particular program that I like also offers international perspectives. And so I can talk about sort of my own experience with international perspectives um, or learning, you know, I really wanna gain more knowledge about cross-cultural competencies. And then I can talk about courses that excite me. So if this program courses X, Y, and Z, I can reference back to courses that I've taken why this would, these particular courses are a good foundation to build upon. So that's just an example around organize and Reese will, we're gonna do a live one with Reese and she is gonna be brave and courageous and really show her own process as she's getting organized for her program that she is applying for. All right, now you probably, this is actually something you've probably learned when you've written a college essay for the United States. And this part is the same which is demonstrate, don't tell. So um, you're gonna give 
the what I offer, and you're going to give an example, a demonstration of how um, you are demonstrating that skill. So uh, with, for example, with international perspectives, I would say like, well, not only have I worked with refugees, um, I have lived in XYZ countries and taken a lot of coursework on intercultural understanding. Um, so you're gonna demonstrate how you, um, what you offer is key. All right, so now we're gonna move on to write the W. And I'm just gonna give you the general formula. The general formula is concise background, the why and the conclusion. And you get a play around in here depending on the word count. So concise background. Here you want two to three sentences. You want to explain really very strongly and clearly at the very beginning, I align with this program because, and it's really elegant. If you know what career you're going for to make a direct line from that program to your career goals in this initial paragraph. And we'll, I'll, we'll give you an example, but I will say it's super elegant. Then after that, you're gonna talk about the why. Um, here, if you've done your homework well, so if you've prepared, done the research, and then if you have organized, you're gonna just use that chart and start to, to create some paragraphs off of, off of that. And this is demonstrating that you've done your homework, you understand the program, and you're aligning yourself with it. And then finally, the conclusion. This is again, two to three sentences max. You're gonna just reiterate why you are excited about this particular program, going back to why this academic content is exciting for you and how it aligns with your goals. So that's the formula. And I will also say um, this formula works really well for cover letters. Usually cover letters are more bulleted and you can do the same thing. But again, you're not doing a lot of blah, blah about your backstory. You're, you're aligning the program or the job with what you offer and your goals. All right. So the E is edit. So all you're gonna do, did I meet the word count? Right, so that's pretty easy. But oftentimes we either need to edit down um, and take out some examples, or you could embellish examples. And I'll show you, Reese has done something really elegantly here in her essay, where she's looking at a, um, she embellished with a faculty example. And so that's a beautiful, and I'll show you that in a second. So did you meet the word count? Did you demonstrate that you've done your homework, that you understand this program, you understand all the courses, you understand the goals of the program, and you understand the pedagogy and how you're a good fit for it, and that you are connecting the dots for them very directly. And then finally, just do a little once over. So what this means is go back to that program page where they describe the, the details of the program. Are you hitting all of the key factors that, of that program? Did you miss anything? So that's the edit phase. And then finally, it's the R review. Now, Reese was the one who came up with this quote, which is, feedback is a gift. And I think we've all been there. It feels super scary to share your work and to um, ask somebody for feedback. So I think it's helpful to reframe it and say, all right, I am going to be brave and courageous and know that the information I get back is actually a gift and it's here to help me. So, um, so anyhow, my suggestion is you wanna have two, you know, be it colleagues, parents, friends, teachers, guides, 
read over your statement of purpose. You may need to explain to them that it's more like a cover letter versus your typical US college essay. Now you're asking them is, is, how does it read for clarity? Is there anything that's confusing? Is there anything you'd add or delete? Um, be sure to get several opinions so you can improve. And also remember, you don't have to take all advice. I want you to also listen to your gut. So um, this is also true, I think, for resumes and cover letters too. So uh, get some feedback and listen to your gut too. All right. So Reese, um, I think is pretty soon gonna show herself. There is Reese, yay. So um, Reese, would you, before we dive into your chart, would you just sort of describe a little bit of your academic background and also like what types of programs you're applying for generally? Yeah, so hi everybody. My name is Reese. I graduated in June of 2020 with uh, my bachelor's in international studies with a focus on human rights um, and minors in urban studies and leadership studies. Um, and with a program for graduate school, uh, I'm really looking for something that allows me to do that hands-on learning that Denise talked about, um, something that is based in a location that I can learn from the people, I'm not just interested in studying international development from the book, but also really learning from locals. Um, so having some kind of community involvement of some kind um, and lo also looking for something um, that is really taking ethics into consideration with international development, which is a bit weird, but Denise and I have talked about that bit before um, and why that's important to me. So I found this program through the course that Denise mentioned earlier. Um, I took that course and got my list of my top five best fitting programs. Um, and this one that we're be, we'll be focusing on tonight was one of those programs um, that's in uh, international development and human rights, focusing on uh, Europe and the Mediterranean, which is really interesting to me. Uh, so I downloaded that worksheet that's in the chat for everybody um, and filled out the chart. And this is my chart. Great. So let me let me highlight a few things, Reese, here. So um, and also, Reese and I have already talked about this before. So uh, this isn't my first radio with Reese on this. But um, basically, what Reese is excited about is the, the program is wants people to have a career goal around working for international organizations or NGOs. And that aligns really well with Reese's goals in regards to what her career goals are and what she wants to do afterwards. And Reese also is excited about this program because it's based in a capital city and the faculty pull in a lot of uh, embassies and NGOs that are based there in order for students to have sort of real life professional experience, right? So that felt very exciting for her too. And then Reese was also interested in her course called Politics in the Middle East, see the law of the sea and international law, which Reese, did you want to say a word about that particular course? Because that one was a shocker for me. Yeah, this one's definitely a gap in my knowledge. Um, you know, I've studied international human rights law and how that applies with the International Criminal Court and things like that, but not, I haven't studied anything about like the law of the sea, um, but I'd be really interested to know what that looks like, especially as it deals with different refugee crises, um, different social refugees, but also climate refugees that we're seeing um, uh, happen now. So I, I think it should be an interesting course, but I don't know much about it. <laughs> yeah, and I think it's really appropriate here. You talked about that's a gap that you wanna fill. So I think that's great. And then um, conflict analysis, um, I know that caught your eye. Did you wanna talk about your experience in Rwanda? Yeah, so in 2018, I got to study abroad on the SIT program, uh, visiting Uganda and Rwanda. 
um, and we did a deep dive into the Rwandan genocide um, and different peacemaking techniques they used after the genocide. Um, so studying post-conflict methodologies in terms of bringing communities together is something that's really interesting to me. Um, and when I was looking at the different courses that this program offered, I was able to download the syllabus for this course and got to see who the professor was. And then I did some little research on the, the professor who teaches the course um, and saw that they have really interesting research about um, conflicts in Europe and the uh, Mediterranean and the Middle East. Um, and that's a huge focus of this class. So I'd be interested to compare different um, post-conflict peacemaking techniques. Awesome. Um, and you also put in here around um, evaluating trends and development. Um, is it, and is, can you talk a little bit about that a bit? Yeah, so this was on the website about the program. Um, is that you would evaluate current trends. Um, and I think that, you know, we've seen so much happen over the last 18 months regarding COVID and how that's impact international affairs. Um, but we're in a time that requires a lot of really creative solution thinking. Um, and that's what really excites me. Um, and so that's one of the learning outcomes of the program. So I wanted to definitely highlight that that's something that I'm interested in. Yeah, so highlighting those trends and um, continuing learning instead of just doing sort of what folks of ours have always done. So I think that sounds great. So you can see what Reese did here. It's very elegant, right? So she's researched the program. She's looked at faculty bios, looked at syllabi, identified those things and identified what she offers. So this is really great. And I should um, also, I, I want to give Reese some love right now because it is super vulnerable to come out, right? On um, come out live here and show your work. You're the draft of your work, so I want to. I want you to know it's a safe space, and thank you for being um, courageous in order to do this for us. Yeah, thank you for the the feedback. I think anything that's helpful. So if anyone has anything they want to drop into the chat, any encouragement or any advice, let me know. I'm all yours for it. So. Okay. Yeah, and we are a community here. So if there's something you want to put in the chat um, or in Q&A, um, either of those are appropriate places to put your questions or your comments. We also have a Facebook Live going on at the same time, and Reese is also monitoring that. And if there are questions that appear over there, um, she will pop them into the chat over here. All right, so let's see what Reese has done. All right, so we are going to live edit this together. This was her intro paragraph, right? Remember, you want relevant information only. Um, so please consider me for the blank program. I bring years of relevant experience. Uh, move this over with a focus uh, as a student at naming her undergraduate university and program majoring in international studies with a focus of international organization and human rights. So I, I think that's the first one I think is, is a solid sentence. I would probably, um, I, please consider me as completely fine. You could also say, I am thrilled to apply or I'm very um, excited to apply for the blah, blah, blah program. Another way to do it. Um, the next sentence, when we look at it together, the deep dive into international organizations such as the EU and UN that this program focuses on will allow me to understand how these agencies operate on the ground, positioning myself for <laughs> positioning myself for a career in international human rights programming. So what I really like about this sentence, Reese, is you have connected the program to your career goals. So that I think is really elegant. And doing that in the very first paragraph, I think is key. I personally find the sentence a little um, uh, convoluted. I would just make it a little more direct. So I would say something like, um, you repeat the program name. So the X program um, focuses on 
EU and UN organizations, mm -hmm. which will position me strongly in a career in international human rights. So it's the same thing, only using more action-oriented language and just keeping it sort of shorter and concise and more direct. Definitely, I think that's really good advice. I find that I sometimes write in a passive voice rather than an active voice. So by making that tweak to flipping the sentence around, it'll be a lot more active um, and a lot more action-oriented, like you said. Yeah, but I love what you did by connecting it to your career. Like, that's awesome. Like, that's a very strong first paragraph. Great. Thank you. Let's see how you do on the next paragraphs. Um, all right. So I like, let's back up a little bit here. So this paragraph, what you're trying to do, right, is demonstrate that um, you recognize the benefit of respectful discourse. Mm -hmm. Now, what's missing and what I think you should start with is how does the program support this learning? It's always, what does the program offer? That's your, not about you. Don't start with you, start with the program. So you would say something like, the X program offers courses. On, I don't know if it does offer courses on but for example, offers courses on um, respectful discourse and dialogue. Uh, I, it, I am excited for this for my career goal in my, at university, or my past university experience, I took a course on this and I um, did a service learning project where we worked with, I don't know, refugee communities mm -hmm. or something like that, right? So you're, but start with a program and what does, the program um, offer. Is there, Reese, do you have any, is, is there, are you having any experience as we're talking this through? Yeah, sorry, I'm trying to take notes on all of this at the same time, because I think it's really helpful. Um, I think I just need to be a lot more direct in um, mentioning what the program offers, like you said, and just keeping on tying it back to that to show that I did my research on the program. Um, yeah, I brought this up to show that, you know, I, um, it, while I don't speak the local language in this area, um, that um, there's other ways to communicate, especially in post-conflict settings, um, but I need to make that a little bit more direct and straight to the point instead of this, like, storytelling way. Yeah, yeah, I think, like, imagine a job interview or a job posting, right, so for this cover letter, you want to say, like, you are looking, you know, you are offering blah, blah, blah on respectful dialogue. And, you know, that's a prerequisite of this program. And here's what I, how I show up or something like that. Mm -hmm. So um, great. So yeah, so anyhow, I think come back to this and we'll revisit it again at a later time. Great. Let's move on to the next paragraph. Okay, so here's where Reese is looking at um, the courses that are offered, right? So there's the course called Politics in the Middle East, and there's another course, the Case Studies in Conflict Analysis. So um, here's where she's demonstrating, hey, guess what? I've done my homework. I know the courses. So what I really like this paragraph a lot, us particularly, I want to direct your attention. Look at Reese's last sentence. So she um, is referencing one of the professors um, and talks about his, his mm -hmm. or her um, engagement. Um, and, and I think that that also demonstrates, it takes you down the rabbit hole and demonstrates, hey, not only do I know the courses, I'm paying attention to the professors. So I think that's really lovely. Personally, I think what, it's a lot stronger, again, sort of the same feedback, start with the program. So you say something like, um, while many or all of the courses offered on this program are engaging and intriguing, I am particularly drawn to uh, taking politics in the Middle East and case studies and conflict analysis. 
um, and then talk about you and how, you know, you can say like, when I was in undergrad, I took a history of the Middle East course, and this gives me the foundation to do a deeper dive into, I like you say, the complexities that raw resources play out in international affairs. And then, then talk about your Rwanda thing too. But again, st always start with the program. Mm -hmm. You need to demonstrate you have done your homework. And y'all, I should mention that Greece is applying for a master's program, but this same is true for undergrad because really at the undergrad level abroad, you're applying to a major, you're applying to a program, you're not applying generally to a university. So it requires the same thing and the same thinking um, in regards to demonstrating why you are a good fit for this program. I think but, that's- Oh, go on, sorry. I was just saying, I, what I think is interesting is um, for applying for a US-based undergraduate program and you're writing your Common App essay, um, they always say, you know, to choose a story that was uh, life-changing maybe in some way. And here we're really flipping it to be program oriented first. And so I think you kind of stressing that in both these paragraphs is really helpful because it's tricky to get that out of your head from all of the common app essay advice from undergrad in the US. Um, but this is much more of a, of a cover letter like you've stated. I think a helpful tip that you gave me too was like thinking about it in terms of like bullet points, like turning those into sentences to be a little bit more direct rather than wishy-washy with like a story time situation. Yeah, so again, right, you wanna clearly make that uh, alignment as clear as you can and as concisely as you can um, in the word count framework. Uh, and so too much flowery language, I think works against you in that model. Okay, so. Well done. I really like that last sentence too. I think that was very elegant. Thank you. And that's a great trick, y'all. So if you do research on faculty, drop a faculty name in there. You don't need to over, you know, put everybody's name in there, but find somebody that resonates with you and a course that resonates with you and pop that in. It's beautiful. All right. Now, this is Reese's conclusion, right? Two to three sentences max. Um, and this sort of speaks to sort of the, your, the reason why I'd say you are interested in this program. Um, all right, so let's look at it together. We are in unique, unprecedented times that require creative solutions to decades old human rights crises, as well as new age environmental and social issues. Understanding the history of European studies, debating solutions with others and flexing creative muscles will make the world a better place. This program will allow me to take the skill, these skills into a fulfilling career in international human rights. Thank you for your consideration. Um, I think it's pretty good. Again, I would almost flip it you want to say why, you know, and again, name the program. So it sort of reinforces that, that you're clear on what the program is. So the X program um, will allow me to grow, you know, the skills, the knowledge, and the um, networking contacts into a fulfilling career in international human rights. And I would start there and then you can continue with the, the other uh, information. I would add, because I happen to know this program is not just European studies, but also looks at Middle East and Mediterranean. So probably add that language in there too, um, to demonstrate you know what the program is. But um, yeah, again, start with the program and then you can sort of talk about you and your interest and your passion there. Okay. Yeah, thank you. I think something that Denise had told me before was to try to tie in that career part again, like I did in the intro, was to also bring it here. So I added that and I thought that was a helpful little piece of advice. Yeah. And at the, at the master's level, that should be fairly, mm -hmm. I don't know if it's easy, but it should be at least clear. Sometimes at the undergrad level, you're like, I don't know, maybe this is my career. So sometimes these um, 
paragraphs at the undergrad level, I mean, you have to be truthful for yourself, but you can also say, I'm very interested in X career. Um, with, you know, knowing that you are still exploring too. Mm -hmm. Definitely. All right, so let's see. I think we're good here. Let's take a look at the, the next phase is actually sort of fun, which is to celebrate. I feel like we often, when we get through this whole process and when we've uploaded our essays and gone through that, we don't take time to celebrate our wins. And um, so making sure that when you are feeling good about your statement of purpose, congratulate yourself and get feedback from others of like, do some high fives. So we do have a Facebook community and that can just be a place to ask questions and also to high five yourself and others to celebrate. Cause it's pretty, it's monumental when you take these steps. All right, so now we have time, which is perfect. We've got time for some questions. <laughs> Yay, so Kevin wrote, I know any national university would be lucky to have Reese as a graduate student. Yay. That's really kind. <laughs> awesome. So let's take a look and see um, what questions are popping up. Uh, ben is asking for the graph. Do we include the graph in our personal statement ah, or build the personal statement based on the graph? Good, good question. Yeah, the graph is just there to help you organize. And then you take, it's sort of the building blocks for the essay. Um, you're not gonna use, I mean, they won't see the actual graph, but it's more to help you stay organized. So when you're writing your essay that it, it has some cohesion. And I can say with that, having done both parts of it, um, I typed a lot more in my graph than was on the slides. And I was able to just copy and paste directly into the essay portion once I had done that. So it's good building blocks uh, to do that graph, just to organize your own thoughts before writing the essay. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, like I said, the graph, the, the most work that you do is in the P, which is the prepare and the O, the organize, when you're using that graph. And then when you're doing the writing, you're just pulling from those components. All right, any other questions out there that we can help you with? Or if you are wondering like, is this right for me? Is there anything else I need to know about statement of purpose? We did get one on Facebook that's asking about demonstrated interest and if that's a thing for abroad universities um because it's really stressed I guess in undergrad um yeah I I I mean you have to to obviously demonstrate that you are interested either through your past experiences or through your career goal but that's how I would demonstrate it um but if you're using the graph I think you should be able to clearly like find what, what intrigues you about the program. So take those components and then talk about here's um, why, or here's what I offer to make this connection um, or how it relates to a career goal. Mm -hmm. I don't I hope that answers your question. I have a follow-up question I can ask on their question, um, which is for undergraduate programs in the US again, um, you know, signing up for tours or emailing the university is a good way to show demonstrated interest that some universities take that into account. Um, and I'm not sure if that is a- Oh, well. I see I don't what you're saying. I don't know if saying. that's what they could be hinting No, at. I mean, you, you're gonna demonstrate it through this essay. This essay is actually key. And so you're gonna demonstrate you're interested in the program through um, demonstrating your research and how you connect. Now, I will say, I happen to know Reese got a call um, from the university because they saw she was applying. So that can also be a place to ask 
questions and to show more interest, they're not, that's not going to help you necessarily with points like, oh, they talked to me on the phone, so I get X, Y, Z points. They don't care about that. But what does matter is in this phone call, Reese can ask clarifying questions about the program and get really good information to make her essay even better and demonstrate, I understand this program really well. Mm -hmm. And there, there wasn't any word count on my application for this program, so I was unsure of what to do. So I might ask in a phone call what they're really looking for. But do you have any like general advice on word counts when there's nothing listed, Denise? Gosh, I mean, it. I think treat it sort of like you would a cover letter, right? So you don't want to have it be like pages and pages long. Nobody's going to read that. So you want to have probably one, one and a half pages, um, could be two, double spaced. <laughs> but um, yeah, you, you want to, just like with a cover letter, the more direct and precise you can be of making those connections, I think it, it, it helps them to see why you're a good fit for the program, that you understand the program, and it weeds through other people who are just giving a lot of blah, blah that aren't making those connections. Mm -hmm. That's a good piece of advice. Stay concise, keep it to the same as you would a cover letter, so a page or so. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but again, read the instructions because most of them give you word counts. This is a weird one that they didn't give you a word count. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I think it's a great follow-up question to ask mm -hmm. them find out. And then if you have other questions about the program, like for example, around professional networking, or you could have a question around, um, you know, is there, are there any internship possibilities, things like that. Um, then that also shows like, uh, you can add those pieces in if they're relevant. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, I want you to know, I am always here for you. So if you need, um, some help, if you've just got a question, please join the Facebook group. That's a great place to do it too. You can also just reach out to me. I am at denise at affordabledegreesabroad.com and happy to help you think through issues. Because uh, I know it's confusing. There's a lot out there, a lot of programs, a lot of things to think about, particularly with your, you know, how it relates to your career and your career goals. So um, anyhow, I care about you and I care about your success and uh, I want to be that ally for you. Uh, Reese, do you have any final words of encouragement for anyone out there listening? Um, it's daunting, but um, I think once you kind of follow the worksheet, it guides you through kind of all the necessary steps. And it took me from not knowing what a statement of purpose was to having a first draft done. So thank you so much for your feedback tonight. I'll implement it and then I'll post it on the Facebook community um, before the application is complete. Uh, so thank you all for joining me in this experience of getting some live feedback. Yay, and Reese, thanks again for being vulnerable because I know this is really scary to, you know, sort of showcase your, your work um, live. So thank you for that. All right, y'all. So I am excited that uh, we had this opportunity today and reach out to me if you have questions, join the Facebook group, or you can also join the course if you are trying to figure out which programs you want to apply to. All right. Thank you. Bye-bye.